Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well. I'm in Topaz Studio 2 today, just having fun. It's a, it's a product that always causes me to just kind of do things a little bit different, experiment, and uh, just kind of pursue sort of creative angles, if you will. And that's kind of what I've done in this photo. I have a sunset on a beach taken in Oregon a few years ago. And the colors were kind of nice, but it's pretty washed out looking. And uh, with just a few basic steps in studio, I was able to really bring it back, give it some punch, and kick it up a notch. So let me show you the photo. Here's my base photo. And then there's after a little bit of work in Studio 2, where I was able to create a little bit of artistic, a little almost surreal uh, color look, but um, I think not quite past the point of reality. So believable, but kind of edgy. Let me um, jump into Studio and show you what I did. Okay, here I am in Studio, and the first thing I did is crop. So bottom left, just grab the crop, and I went with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, just an aspect ratio that I tend to like quite a bit. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find the best way to uh, place this because um, I do want to get a lot of that sky in there. And so I'm pulling this up. I want to keep some of these lines over here. I really like them. And I like the reflection here of that. So I don't want to get it too off center. Um, you know, you might would think just to go all the way and line that rule of thirds line up with the coastline, which is probably what uh, most people would do. I'm going to go a little bit below that something about like that, and I'm gonna say apply, and my photo is cropped. Now I'm gonna say fit so I can get it fully into the frame and have a bigger view of the image. So the first thing I did is I wanna to go to look, and I looked in artistic, and I just kinda of scrolled through here. I sorted by all, and I saw expressionism. So I went ahead and hit apply. But as you can see, that's very painterly, and I'm not going for necessarily a painterly image, except for a little bit of the color. I want the details to be um, I want it to look real, not like I'm creating a digital painting, which I love to do those in studio, but for this one, I wanted to keep it kind of realistic. And so, um, you know, the first thing I thought is, let me just pull the opacity down. And so what I did is I ended up pulling this opacity down to about 27. And I thought that actually looked pretty nice. The clouds still have a little bit of that artistic look in them. Um, you can see that it's a little bit still... Um, painterly, if you will, in some of the uh, this this sea stack rock that's on the beach there. But that's okay. I, I think it looks fine, and, and I like it. So I just left it alone. Now, if you wanted to, you could go into smudge, and the smudge is what's creating a lot of this kind of artistic look. But with the other edits that I do, I actually think it looks fine the way it is. Now, if you decide that you want to change it later, you can always come back to this filter and go back into smudge and readjust it. But I'm okay with it the way it is, having it reduce the opacity significantly. It's really limiting the impact of that artistic sort of painterly look, mostly. I mean, it's, I think it was at 27. There's enough there that you're like, it's kind of painterly, but maybe it's just a nice sunset. And that's kind of the look I'm going for. Okay, next I'm gonna start playing with filters. So I go in here and I get the basic adjustment. And I'm not messing with the exposure or clarity. I'm pretty fine with all of that. I'm just going down here to saturation, temperature, and tint. So saturation I'm taking to about a 22 or so, something about like that, trying to give it a little bit of pop. The temperature I'm going slightly negative, so like a negative 15 or so. And the tint I'm gonna go positive to about 40, something about like that. And this was something I just landed on after some experimentation. Um, and that's what I recommend, especially in studio, out of all the apps that I use, it's one that really causes me to experiment a lot. I just mess around until I find the colors and the looks and the details, things like that, that feel like they fit the image for me. Okay, so now I'm fine with that, and I'm gonna go get another filter, and in this case, I'm gonna get blur. And so there's two kinds of blur. There's diffusion blur, so if you just start dragging the amount, diffu oh, sorry, Gaussian blur and diffusion blur, but Gaussian will blur like that, which to me is really just too much. Um, and I don't want to lose every aspect of the photo, which is what starts happening with Gaussian blur. So that might be one to like accentuate a long exposure on water, but I'm not doing that. I'm going to use the diffusion blur. So I'm going to go over here and I went to about 60 or so. And I actually felt like that did a really good job. Let me turn that off. There's the before. You can see a little bit more of the texture, including kind of the painterly look that the previous smudge and stuff in the expressionism uh, look added. But um, when you click uh, the blur, and I'm using the, uh, let me get back to that, the diffusion uh, blur, I feel like it works really well. It almost simulates a long exposure, and it smooths out some of the rougher edges of that painterly look. So to me, it makes it look a little bit more real, even though 
it is kind of painterly. So I don't know if that makes sense, but the, the diffusion blur for me worked really well here. And again, I used that at about a 60. I did not change softness or the amount of the uh, blur. I just left strength at 60. Okay, and then I popped over here to brightness and contrast. And in this case, the first thing I wanted to do is in, um, increase the contrast because I feel like it's a little, a little too lacking. And kind of what I'm doing is I'm creating a little bit of a silhouette around that C stack. And as you can see beforehand, let me go back down here. Um, you can see some of the, uh, the texture and some of that painterly um, application of that smudge uh, filter in the expressionism look. You can see that kind of in there. And so um, I don't really care for that, to be honest. So I like the adjustment. I just don't want you to see it visibly in the rock. And so I'm increasing the contrast for that reason, which hides it. And the reason it hides that is because it darkens that and creates a little bit more of a silhouette, which I think it accentuates the look of the photo. So I did that. Let me show you the before and after here. So there's before. It's a little bit flatter. It was lacking in, in contrast. So I added the, uh, the increase in contrast, which helps me with that. It also darkens some of the sand. So basically contrast is the difference between the brighter and the darker parts of the image. The brighter parts have all the color. I like that. So they're getting a little bit brighter looking. And the dark parts, which are the, uh, the C stack over here and this one on the left, uh, they're getting darker. So it's creating just, I don't know, better contrast, I guess. It just makes a little bit better look in the photo. It also does pop the color. So think of the, uh, think about that when you're adjusting contrast, the impact that it has on color. It sometimes may cause you to need to go back and adjust your colors. In this case, I'm pretty okay with it, but I am gonna take the saturation down just a tad. And then overall, I'm just gonna take the, uh, the opacity of this filter down a little bit as well. So something about like that, and so let me go show you the before and after. So there's the before the brightness contrast filter, and there's after. I didn't mess with the brightness at all, but I did increase contrast, reduce saturation a little bit, and then reduce the opacity of the, uh, the filter itself or uh, that, that tool. And I just wanted to reduce the impact of that on the photo, which I think did a good job. So overall, there's before brightness contrast, and there's after. Okay, and then the last step is just to go get the dual tone filter, which is down here in Creative. It's the same as split toning. It basically allows you to isolate the highlights and the shadows separately and apply a different color look to each, um, as well as an amount or an opacity or saturation level, whatever you want to call it. So I started with highlights, and what I did is I went to about a, a 33 here, um, and that's the amount. Uh, let me get that back up to about 33. That's the amount, but uh, in the hue, what I wanted to do is this is where you pick your hue. So as you can see, as you drag this around, you're basically picking a color hue that's being applied at uh, a level of 33. So what I, what I did is I came down here to about 02, which is kind of in the pinkish kind of red range. And then having given that a, a 33 at, at zero, you can see I'm not getting any of that. But if I start moving this up, I'll get that uh, nice kind of pink color, which I think goes really well with the highlights because it is a sunset and it's bringing up some of that nice soft kind of pastel light. And then for shadows, I was over here at about a 29 and a little bit bluer, like a, about a 70 or 71. And that's, that's really just adding a little bit of blue to the darker parts of the image, which I think um, is gonna help you with the overall contrast as well. So there's before the dual tone or split toning filter and after. You can see I put a little bit more pink in the sky and a tiny bit of blue in the shadows just to give it a little bit of darkness. Also, the blues are primarily over here on the left, and so um, that's kind of an anchoring element for me where I have the C stack on the left. So it's kind of darkening and adding contrast there, which I think kind of leads your eye, I feel like. You're kind of dark over here, and then you're kind of led over to the right and up as you kind of uh, your eyes start to go look at those colors. And that's really the overall workflow. So let me show you the before. Now that's after the crop. I did crop it down to this 16 by nine kind of widescreen kind of look. And after, and that's just a few basic filters that are very simple to use and um, you know kind of fun to be honest. Starting with the expressionism and then through uh, through a, a couple of different filters after applying that look, I just recommend it, uh, you know experiment with the different sliders and then also don't hesitate to experiment with the opacity of any look or filter that you apply, just because it may impact the overall uh, mood of the photo. But that was how I got from that that one from basically kind of a washed out kind of flat look to what I consider a vibrant, beautiful sunset. And that's my workflow here in Topaz Studio. Hope it's helpful. If you haven't yet subscribed or 
uh, commented, please do so. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know you like the video, and I'll be back more with, uh, or I'll be back soon with more stuff. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you soon. Have a great day. Take care, and adios.